Hello artists, a couple of things before we start. First, since I can't add a notation to a YouTube video after posting, if I discovered any mistakes in this tutorial post postum, I'm going to write it down in the description. Do yourself a favor and read it now rather than spend an hour and a half wondering why some keyboard shortcut isn't working. Two, this is pretty much a part two of my last tutorial, which was about polishing a character model. If you don't watch it first, you're likely not going to be able to follow this one. And with that said, let's get started. We put a lot of work into this role, from cleaning the armature, to detailing the body, to making that fancy skin material. Now, every time we need a troll, we can use this model. We can add things, we can change things, but we don't have to make it anew. For example, if we want to change the skin, we can go to the material, go to the main texture node, open any other troll texture we want, disconnect all the tattoo nodes because we don't need them in this one, disable the mix shader, and we have a new troll. If you want our new tool to have all these parts, for example, we can simply add them to the existing model. Export this as FDX, import it into Blender. Now we do all the usual cleanup we do in FDX. Take the body, unparent it from the armature, Alt P, clear and keep transformation. Get rid of the armature. We want to always have the rotation on 0, 0, 0 and the scale on 1, 1, 1. Otherwise we get problems later. Hit Ctrl A. Apply, Rotation and Scale. Now separate the parts you want to add to your old model, the parts that it doesn't have. There are several selection methods you can use. You can hit L to select linked. You can delete the parts that make selection harder. You can toggle X-ray view or do it with the keyboard shortcut of Alt-Z. Then B to box select. C to circle select and hold down mouse wheel and brush over it to remove from selection. And you can also select a single vertex and then expand selection by hitting Ctrl plus several times until you run out of what to select. Then H to hide it or X to delete it according to what you need. Another way of selecting things is using the material associated to them. I can do this on the hair. Go to the hair material, hit select and hide it. Circus select with left mouse button allows you to select by brushing. Don't forget to hit escape afterwards because you can't do anything when you're still on circle select. And with the trousers, pay attention to the fact that you have the troll's own thighs with the trousers overlapping. I delete them like everything else. I deleted everything I don't need, and now I hit Alt-H to unhide everything I hid. And now I do the usual cleanup I do on any item I import into Blender. Let's rename this. Let's also make a new material for this gear. In the material panel we click plus to add a new material slot. New to actually create this material. Name it whatever. Go to the shader editor. Add a new texture node. Connect it to this new material base color. The texture we have in the material is the one saved automatically inside the FBX file. If you want to access it independently, you'll need to export your model from our model viewer as OBJ. It saves the model, but it also saves the texture separately, which is very convenient. Export it there, come back to Blender, and in the texture node here, click Open, navigate to where you saved it, and open it. Get rid of the annoying specular. Move the new material we just created all the way up the list until it's straight under the hair in the task, and delete all the other materials starting from the bottom. They get consolidated to the one above them. Let's quickly fix the hair material, go to it, Delete those useless nodes that arrive automatically with importing an FBX from our model viewer. Get rid of the annoying metallic in specular. Rename it whatever. As for the tasks, we already made a lovely material for them in the last tutorial, so we can just use that. In edit mode, select the tasks. In the material panel, hit plus. Find the tasks material and assign. We have all these parts ready. Let's bring our troll. Select the new parts. Shift left click the armature to select it as well. Make sure to select the armature last, this way it will be the active element. You can tell it is because it's lighter orange and the rest are darker. Then hit Ctrl P and select with empty groups. With the new parts attached to the armature and working, we can now change some of the skin texture to this new Death Knight armor texture and we'll have a ready character. Go to the body, go to edit node, in face select, select all the faces you want to have the new Death Knight material. Go out of edit node, add that new Death Knight gear material to the body. 
Now go back to edit mode and hit assign. And you're done and you have a new character. Let's give this material some loving and make parts of it glow, just like the art gods intended. First, let's take the metallic value all the way up and lower the roughness a little. To make only part of the texture glow, we need a mask. Open the texture in Photoshop or whatever other photo editing software you like. Trace only the parts that should be glowing and make a black and white mask. Mine ended up looking like this. Then we can drag and drop it into our shader editor window. Change the color space to non-color data. Add an emission shader. Mix it with the original texture. Use the mask we made as the factor between the two and plug the texture to the emission color. Now we can make it really glowy and enjoy the awesome death nightness of it all. We brought new tasks for this guy, but we need to get rid of the older one. Instead of separating and hiding them like any other body parts, we can use a mask. Let's go to the original draw body. In the modifier panel, go to add modifier mask. From the vertex group drop-down, select the tasks group, which I very much hope all of you made in the last tutorial, and click this arrow to flip the selection. We can toggle this on and off and you can see we have the new tasks. The hair is here, but we can't see any bones to shape it. That's because Axnalara put them in another layer. With the armature selected, go to the armature panel. Under skeleton, you can see we have layers. Those with the dots are layers that have things in them. The rest are empty. If we go to layer number two, we can see our hair bones. Go to edit mode, select the last two, expand selection all the way up, hit M like Magtheridon and move them to a separate layer. Now they're in layer number five and we can easily pose them. Let's say we want to dress this troll fancily with something that completely doesn't belong to its original model. For example, Rathion's outfit. Let's export Rathion twice. Once as OBJ to get the texture, and one says FBX to get him standing in the T pose because that makes connecting the outfit to the model much easier. As before, let's bring the FBX and do all the normal cleaning on it. I'm selecting only the body, Alt P to clear and keep transformation, hiding the body, selecting everything else and deleting it, scaling the body up to the size I like, hitting RZ minus 90 to have him face me, and applying rotation and scale. Just like with the draw gear before, now I need to get rid of all the parts I don't want. Let's go to edit mode and use all the selection methods we know to do that. Now let's consolidate the materials. Get rid of the annoying metallic and specular in both of them. And if you notice, we have those weird black blotches in several places in the texture, which make it look weird. That's because there's an unused alpha channel on this texture. We can easily disable that if we go to the texture in the shader editor window. With this node selected, hit N like Nazoth, go to item, properties, alpha, and change it from straight to none. And the black blotches are gone. Now we need to fit this to the troll. Let's bring him back, hide the irrelevant parts, change the gear material back to the skin material, scale the outfit up to fit, don't forget to apply rotation and scale again. And to fit it to the character, we're going to use something called proportional editing. If you go to edit mode, we can find proportional editing up here. Click it to activate it. Proportional editing means that if I drag a vertex, the neighboring vertices will be dragged with it. Currently, we don't see much because the area of effect, that circle you can see here, is very small. But if I use the mouse wheel to scroll up, you see what we get. Proportional editing has two options. You can only get to them when you're in edit mode. If you click this drop down here, you can either select connected only or not. You can imagine what that does and that's extremely useful. I usually start with connected only. Before we do anything else to this outfit, let's select and separate the sleeves because we're going to have to deal with them later. Hit P to separate selection and hide them for now. Now we can select the entire outfit, merge by distance to make our lives a little easier. And let's start editing this outfit to fit the body. And to make sure we're not ruining anything in the process, let's make this with a shape key. Go here to the object data properties, under shape keys, hit plus to make a basis one, plus again to make the new one, take the value up all the way to one, name this whatever, go to edit with proportional editing and with connected only active and start editing.
Here in the shins, I want the tops of the boots to move with the bottoms of them, so I'm going to change it from connected only to the other option. Now the entire part of the mesh will move when I pull this face. Let's select those back faces, go up here to the transform pivot point, switch it to individual origins, and hit S to scale. We need to handle the feet, but I think the best way to do that is add a shape key to the body, not to the outfit. Select the body, add a basis shape key, add another shape key, pull the value up to 1, rename it. Make sure your transform pivot point is still individual origins. And in edit mode, select the feet, scale them down, and the outfit is nearly ready. Bring in the sleeves, select half and delete it, add a mirror modifier. If you apply your rotation and scale, it should be automatically in the right place. Now if you go to edit mode, we can alt shift left click to select this entire circle, hit alt s, cursor to selected, go out of edit mode, and change the transform pivot point to 3D cursor. Now when we rotate the arm, the pivot is the 3D cursor, which makes it much easier to position. Take it to edit mode, and use adjusting and proportional editing to fit it to the arms. and eventually apply the mirror modifier. Blender's telling me you can't apply modifiers with the shape keys, so in the shape key panel, go to your basis, delete it. Make sure you delete the next one, the one where we did the changes last, and then apply the mirror modifier. Now we need to stop for a brief explanation about armatures, weight, and vertex groups. So a reason an outfit or a body we bring from one model viewer moves with the armature is because the body has the information telling which vertex should be moving with each bone. If this is bone number 21, here in the body there will be a vertex group called bone 21. We can see it here. If we want to see it in a more visual manner, we can see it in weight paint mode. Select the armature, select the body, and from the pie menu go to weight paint. I like doing this in solid mode because it's easier to see. Now if I control left click each bone, I can see the vertices associated with it. Red means this vertex will fully move with the bone, blue means it won't and anything between is self-explanatory. Any part that's originally connected to this draw will move with it because those parts have the vertex group related to those bones. The Rathian outfit, however, belongs to Rathian. If we go to those vertex groups, they're not named Troll whatever, they're named Rathian whatever. In fact, let's remove them. With the Rathian outfit selected, I'm going to this drop down and deleting all groups. It's good practice if you're starting to move outfits from one character to another. So if I connect this Rathian outfit to the troll the same way I did with the troll parts, nothing will happen. Look, control P with empty groups. And that's because the Rathian outfit is missing that data. What we need is to find a way to transfer that data, that weight data, from the troll to the outfit. The way of doing it is a modifier called, surprisingly enough, data transfer. Let's go to the outfit, add modifier, data transfer. Under source, let's select the body because this is where we're going to be copying the weights from. Then check vertex data, vertex groups, click generate data layers, apply this, parent it to the armature again, control P with empty groups. And now the new outfit will move with the armature. <laughs> So it turns out that putting the Rathian outfit on a troll doesn't actually work as well as I'd expected. Whereas when yesterday I tried to put it on a blood elf, it seemed to work really well, as usual. So then I tried to put Nathanos Blightcaller's coat on the same troll and that also wasn't very successful. And I thought that problem solving with a data transfer modifier is probably a topic for an entirely new tutorial. However, when it doesn't involve long coats, this modifier usually gives decent results and I can't think of a better way to do this. But since I did experiment with it for a few hours, I have at least one useful thing I can show. The shoulder cape part was working fine after the data modifier, so I separated it and hid it so I can deal with the problematic part alone. Eventually, I realized that the problem was that the data transfer modifier was being confused by the arms, and I don't need the arms for this part of the coat. So I duplicated the body, 
deleted the arms, deleted the head for good measure, used a data transfer modifier with this armless body, and then all I had to do was bring back the shoulder cape, join the two together, and it worked like a charm. So we know how to do quite a lot of things with the model now, but what if we want to change the body shape? I'm sure we've all looked at the default human male model and got uncomfortable with a gorilla factor. So there's several ways of changing the body shape. The obvious one is shape keys. Go to the body, make a new shape key, take the value all the way up. Go to edit mode, activate proportional editing, and start tweaking things until you get it to look the way you like. That's one way to do it. But then we get the problem of the new body parts not all fitting in. You see? Suddenly his boots are way too big for him. A way around that is to edit both of them together with shape keys. So let's disable this body shape key, make a new shape key here, and take the value up. Go to the armor, make a new shape key, take the value up, then select both body and armor, go to edit mode, disable the connected only option of proportional editing, and start editing again. This time, since we're editing both together, we're not going to have any fitting issues. But I find this way rather convoluted, because if I want to add body parts later, they're not going to fit right off the bat, and I'm going to have to eyeball it. So here's another method of doing that. Where is the armature? In pose mode, we select both femurs, make sure we're on individual origins, then hit S to scale and shift YY to constrain the scaling along the length of the bone. I'll do the same with the arms, and also with the torso. Now you see, it gets us somewhere, but we have an issue. This distortion, which happens because most bones inherit the scaling transformation from their parent bone, and we don't necessarily want them to do that. For example, the troll's head inherited the transformation I did on the midriff bone. So here's how we fix that. I'm going to select it, go to the bone menu, and under relations, under inherit scale, change it from full to none. I'm going to do the same with the clavicles, Select both of them, hold down ALT to apply the change to all selected bones, and down here select none. And my god, the hands! <laughs> so again, let's change inherit scale from full to none. Now I can just resize the hands without constraining it to the bone's local y-axis. Be sure you have individual origin selected. Click S and drag. Let's also narrow those chunky shoulders. And now we can see that the arms are inheriting the scale of the clavicle, so let's disable that. So this is a new body shape, and this is the default. The upside of that one is that any parts bound to the armature change accordingly and will automatically fit. If we still get issues like this forearm armor distorting, we can fix it by again disabling the inherit scale on the forearm bone and scaling it manually. With these three methods combined, body shape keys, joint body shape keys and armature deforming, we can pretty much reshape any models any way we want. I use shape keys not only for changing the entire body, but for giving a more unique personality to the face. If I go to the body and make another shape key for the face, I can, for example, give him a very different nose, push back the nose bridge, flatten the brow, move the chin up, Tweak the cheeks and the eye sockets, and make him distinctly unique and different to the default model. I also like changing the ears. I think there's so much personality to differently shaped ears. And here again, with just several clicks, we have a completely different role, and far more liberty in making our character unique and exciting. We change this body shape quite a lot, but I personally have a tendency to automatically hit Alt G, R and S to reset the pose, and if I do that, I would have all my bone shaping work gone. So I'm going to save this pose, which will allow me to import it again whenever I need. To do that, I need to be in pose mode with all the relevant bones selected. Let's go to the armature tab, to the pose library, click the plus to make a new pose, and I suggest you name it. That's it, now the pose is saved, and if I somehow mess it up, I can always click this magnifying glass, heavens only know why it's the icons relevant to this and apply the saved pose to the armature. This can of course be used not only for body shapes, but for poses you made and liked, or use a lot. For example, I have the hands holding a weapon pose saved in the library for all my characters because it's used so very much, and having it ready saves me tons of time. 
As usual, I couldn't fit half the things I intended to into this tutorial. I'm already working on the next one, and until then, if Blender is trying to kill you or you have any questions, you can drop by my streams on Twitch and ask anything. I do live demos by request. And you can join our Discord Blender Art School server, where most people would probably go very far to make your journey easier. You're welcome with us. Let's all make pretty art.